I love this sign. You matter. Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light, then you energy. Actually, there's even a mistake in this. That's why I think it's kind of fun to look at. I mean, of course, the nerd in me says, ah, watch out. If you're actually going to look at uh, this, we're going to be looking at relativistic mechanics. We're going to look at how different equations like E equals MC squared need to be affected uh, by relativity. Because as you go faster and faster, so as you get closer to the speed of light, um, this effect of relativity, this effect of gamma, for example, becomes more and more important. So that's why as you get closer and closer to the speed of light, as you get some considerable fraction of C, then that becomes more important. But back to this sign here, you matter, right? Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light. They're basically saying E equals MC. They should have said speed of light squared, they should have said, but you know, something, uh, maybe that's not so important. So let's look at this here. We have the total energy in a system. And the total energy is the kinetic energy plus what we call this special thing, a rest energy. So this is when we're going relativistic speeds here. So let's maybe define what we mean by a rest energy here, or at least we'll define this symbol here. We use rest energy. We're going to say E0, and we're going to say rest mass is going to be M0. Now these are going to be because they'll have a certain amount of energy as if they're not going super fast, and as they go faster and faster, um, the energy and the mass become altered, just like time and distance, in other words, length, were altered uh, with relativistic effects. Well, so are energy and so are mass. Now let's look at what kind of units we use. I think it's maybe a good idea to remind you what kind of units we use for these. Rest energy, we're going to use units of mega electron volts, MeV. In other words, that's a electron volt times 10 to the 6, right? That's a million electron volts. And rest mass, if you think about it then, um, mass is just energy over C squared. So what we end up doing is we just say it's MeV per C squared. So we say that. Uh, you might remember this right here. Do you remember this, uh, at least this uh, unit of MeV per C squared? When you're looking at um, nuclear physics, when you do the binding energy equation, uh, we often use this converter that one atomic mass unit is uh, 931.5 MeV per C squared, and that made our lives easier. Uh, we don't actually need it right now, so maybe I'll just erase it so people don't get confused. But this is, these are the units we use here. So what we can do then, we can say, fine, then the total energy which is normally just E equals MC squared, it's just going to be E equals gamma M zero C squared. In other words, it's just uh, gamma, this uh, gamma factor. Remember, gamma is one over one minus V squared over C squared, square root. Right? That's what this is. So um, what we end up doing then is we end up considering, well, the rest mass times C squared. Um, and remember, if we had units of rest mass of MeV per C squared, then those would cancel out. So we just have MeV, which is kind of what we want. We have this rest energy, E0, and that's just M0 C squared without the gamma. And if we want the kinetic energy, I think it might be nice to just show you where that comes from. Watch this. What if I take the kinetic energy right here? Um, well, we can say, well, the total energy here. What if I get kinetic by itself? See, I can do EK. Um, I'm going to put the plus E0 to the other side. So I'm going to have E minus E0. And if I fill in the numbers, then let's see them. That gives me EK equals E, which is gamma M0C squared. That's what I get here for E. And I have to say minus M0C squared. And if I look at this, I say, well, I have a common factor. Both of these terms have an M0C squared. So let's take that out, so to speak. So in other words, we can say EK equals, and what do I have remaining? I have my M0 C squared, and I have a gamma minus, and I have a little one in front of here, so I can say gamma minus one. That's where this came from. So there's your kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, again, that could be measured in mega electron volts. So see, we can deal with mechanics. It's actually not so hard. You just gotta factor in a few things. I like this Chuck Norris one. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, I can roundhouse kick you yesterday. No, you can't go back in time, sorry. So we have momentum. Remember momentum, normally it's P equals MV. Just like before, we have to, if we're doing relativistic speeds, then we gotta put gamma in front of it and make it M0, that's it. So it looks like P equals MV, just chuck a gamma in front of it, make it the rest mass. And again, you don't have to memorize these equations, you get these on your data booklet. Everything that's in green with a big square around it, you don't have to memorize them. Then we have the total energy. 
I like this one here. So e squared equals p squared c squared plus m0 squared c to the fourth. I think maybe a nicer way to look at it is this. Watch this. What if we do this? This is like pc. All that is squared. And this is like uh, m0 c squared squared. That's the same thing. I think it's just nicer to just sort of put them both within square roots. Because what you can do, you can get m0 c squared squared. You can get that one by itself. See, then it'll be e squared minus pc squared. Like this right here. Okay, that's the same thing. I'm just, I'm just rearranging here. But it turns out that this thing right here, we call this sort of thing the invariant mass. So this here actually doesn't change between inertial frames. So this is actually very useful when you do relativity sort of later on or if you do a lot of it. This kind of concept becomes more and more important. As far as what we need for IB physics, uh, especially for the HL, uh, I don't think it's that that important. I think it's nice to be able to just use these equations right here. And I think that's a good idea. You can also have accelerating particles. Those are still within this. They might ask you about those. And notice, actually, this didn't really change. This is the equation EV equals half mv squared. In other words, this is just the kinetic energy of a particle that's been accelerated across a potential difference. So Q could be E, for example, if it's an electron. Uh, Q is the charge of the particle. And the charge of a particle is measured in, do you remember the units? Coulombs. Not C as in the speed of light, as in coulombs. And V is not a velocity here, it's a it's a potential difference. In other words, it's a voltage. So we put that in volts. So you can basically find out what is the speed, this little v, that's the speed. You can say, like, what's the speed of this electron accelerated across, a potential difference of whatever. So just don't forget about those. Those are also important here. Now, I've got an example for you. Ooh, I have this little cartoon from XKCD. I like this one. So I'm currently conducting an experiment which may prove Einstein wrong. Ooh, exciting. In 47, he says, it's impossible to find a good sandwich in this town. Obviously, that's what he's trying to prove. Uh, let's look at this. Um, this example here, how fast does a particle need to travel in order for its total energy to equal three times its rest energy? And a lot of these kind of questions sound hard, but I can tell you, with the relativistic mechanics, it's mainly about bookkeeping. What I mean by that is it's mainly about finding the right equation and just going hunting for it. So, for example... If I'm looking for this kind of situation, I want V. This is what I'm looking for, right? I want V. That's a how fast. I want total energy. What letter do we use for total energy? Let's go back. We use capital E for that. And we have capital E equals gamma M0 C squared. Let's put that in here. So capital E equals gamma M0 C squared. And I have this thing called rest energy. Let's look up that. You see, I'm just looking up the different definitions. Rest energy is E0 equals M0 C squared. So I'll put that in. Oops, so I have E0 equals M0 C squared. Now what I need to do is set the total energy equal to three times the rest energy. So I'm going to say E equals three times E0. This is what I want. Well, to do this, then what do I end up with? I end up with, let's see, um, I'll have gamma m0 c squared equals m0 c squared. No, not quite. Three. I'm forgetting the third. number three, aren't I? There we go. So to see how I'm just setting the different numbers equal to each other, I've got e equals three e0, and this is e, and this is e0. I just got the 3 in there. Do you notice the m0c squared, they cancel out? So I end up with gamma equals 3. Now, that wasn't the question, though. They wanted the speed. Uh, but do you remember how within gamma, we actually have a speed term? So let's maybe try to remember that one. Remember what the equation for gamma is? It's 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared. All that square rooted, of course. So what do I do then? Well, I set that equal to 3. So I can say, all right, great. That means that 3 equals one over. I'm just showing you all the steps. Some people are really fast at doing this, which is great, good for you. I'm gonna take this uh, square root, I'm gonna put it at the top, I'm gonna take the three, put it down. So now I end up with one minus v squared over c squared, square rooted of course, equals one over three. But then if I want this right here to uh, get rid of the square root, then I have to square both sides. So now I have one minus v squared over c squared equals one over nine, because I have to square both sides. One squared is one, three squared is nine. 
then I can put this over and I can put this over. So I end up with uh, V squared over C squared equals, let's see here, I have one minus one over nine. That'd be nine over nine minus one over nine. So that'd be eight over nine. Then what I would do is uh, probably take the square root of everything because I want to get V over C. Right. Uh, if I do that, I'd have to take the square root. Let's maybe just do it now uh, because it's not going to work out to be a nice number. So I'll just do the square root of the answer. I end up with an answer of, um, what is this right here? I end up with V over C equaling uh, 0 0.94. So I could state then that the speed has to be, uh, I just put my C over. So V equals 0 0.94 C. This is how fast you have to be going in order for your total energy to be three times your rest energy. See, it's not actually so bad. I hope you see that we can actually deal with uh, relativistic mechanics. You can totally do this.